want to just have two people to just give me a quick recap of what they understood from last week. Anything that you um that's that stuck out to you last week, anything that you had to contemplate all of this week, or anything that and I'm praying that you would have left Bible study last week, Thursday, and you would have gone and done some reading on your own, because that is something that we always encourage. Whatever we bring to you, you go back to the word of God and examine it for yourself. Um, so if there's any new insight that, you know, you received from your own reading, I would love to hear two people real quick. Um, um yes go ahead Thank to you. one thing that really jumped out for me was when you said generational choices that just really like hit for me um yeah. because it took choices to like a deeper level um and how powerful our choices are uh so for me that this week like I just kept hearing generational choices like throughout the week and I was more intentional with my choices um, after hearing the word generational. So that was like a powerhouse word for me this week. Um, okay. And the other thing that really, there was like a bunch that stuck out, but I will say, I'll just pick one other one uh, was, you said it, it's, it depends on you how deep you want to go and how much you want to die. Um, okay. And this week I used it with my clients even because it's so powerful in our lives. And I was using it in my own life. And I was recognizing areas I still needed to die to and areas that I'm still like tiptoeing in depth and not willing to jump deep in. So mm -hmm. those two areas really hit for me. I won't say all the other ones because I won't use it all up, but... There thank you for that. Those were the two powerful points. And um, thank you for bringing that up. Because, you know, really, of a, a fact, we tend to blame a lot of things in our lives. So generational curses as Christians. Mm -hmm. And God is not in the business of training us to be responsible, irresponsible. So that we can come to him and plead for him to, <laughs> to mm -hmm. bless us in our irresponsibility. You know what I mean? He gives us free will. Mm -hmm. And that is a part of what it means when the Bible tells us that we are made in the image and in the likeness of God. Because we have the characteristics that God has, um, or have rather, which includes a will, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the things that we decide to do is is uh, is the reason why we are in some of the situations that we are in. So that's a good um good good thing that you remember that. Anybody else want to share? And then we'll move on. Yes, no. All right. Thank you, Sister Tara. Can I share my third one then, since no one else is sharing? Sure. The other third one that jumped out was the never uh never get uh the promised land word in Egypt. <laughs> in Egypt to receive <laughs> the word. And that right there was another sucker punch for me. <laughs> amen, amen, <laughs> amen. Thank you so much. All right. So this week we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer because we're looking at this Bible study topic as it is in heaven, right? That is a loaded um, statement, a loaded phrase. If we are praying and we're asking God, cause things to be on earth as they are in heaven, this is where we find that phrase in the Lord's Prayer. And so we're going to take a quick look at the Lord's Prayer just to kind of get a better understanding of what it is. Um, Right, as we move on. So let us turn our Bibles to Matthew, um, chapter six, 
verse 9 to 13. So that's Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13. I'm going to read. It says, pray therefore like this. Anybody have the King James Version? I I can. I, I, pray I, do. I do. Please go ahead, Mama P. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good, good evening, everyone. It reads, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Thank you. So we read this prayer. I mean, I remember when I was younger in uh, primary elementary school, we would, we would be taught this prayer. We had to recite it almost every day. Hmm. Um, and, and, and yes, and we re recite the prayer over and over and over and over and over. But as I became a Christian and began to, you know, walk deeper with the Lord, I recognized that a lot of us are like the disciples in Luke 9, right? We're enthusiastic, but we lack understanding. Even in our prayer time, we are enthusiastic as, as Christians. Um, whether we're intercessors or whatever, whoever we are, we are enthusiastic, but we lack understanding. And the Bible tells us that God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. In Luke chapter 9, verse 54, um, the Bible tells us that they, the, the, the disciples did not understand what God was saying, right? Um, and so they were asking God if it was okay for, for them to call down fire from heaven, right? Because it was all about the, the, the excitement, the enthusiasm, the enthusiasm, what happened it, when they're praying and, 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 and what they can see, what they can physically see, but the, the depth and the understanding of what Jesus was really trying to say to them, right? But the Lord's prayer is not just a model for all prayer. The Lord's prayer is a summary of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. The Lord's prayer is a summary of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And if we had the time to examine every verse, we would be able to get a better grasp of this statement. But I'm going to try my best to help you to understand at least a little bit um, what I mean, right? The Lord's prayer is, is the key to our whole lives. It is the key to our walk with God. And if we should break it down and look at it, we will see, right? So Jesus starts with, if you look further above in Matthew chapter six, above verse nine, Jesus started out by telling them how not to pray, right? Before he started telling them how to pray, he told them how not to pray. And that is in the earlier verses of chap uh, chapter nine, right? Because the way that, they were praying, not the disciples, but the other people in the in the synagogue, the temple leaders and the teachers and all of these people. The way they were praying was just a, a, a performance. It was just a performance, right? Uh, and so Jesus was saying, don't pray like this. And that is why he said in the book of Matthew, in this manner, this is the way that you should pray. He didn't say this is the prayer that you should say, but this is the way that you should pray, right? You should pray as if you are, um, as if you are like a baby coming to their parents and asking their parent for something, right? Understanding that the parent is the one with the authority to make the decision. You should pray like a child coming to their father, all right? But a lot of us 
we cannot grasp that understanding because our relationship with our earthly fathers are so lacking that we cannot understand the concept of going to our heavenly father like a child. And hmm. that is a part of the problem. And so what we have to do is to recognize that there is a relationship between us and God. And we have to ensure that that relationship is as God designed it, not based on circumstances that you've experienced or your understanding of what a relationship with a father is, but it's really how God designed it. And if we can grasp that, that um, the understanding of that relationship at that level, then we would be better able to, to pray this prayer, right? So who is a father? A father is good, caring, loving, even in discipline. Because sometimes your father is going to be disappointed. Your father is going to be upset. Your father is going to have to discipline you. But does it mean that he doesn't love you when he disciplines you? The Bible says that the Lord chastens those that he loves, right? And so when we think of our father, we think of this amazing person, this good person, this caring person, this person who's loving. And even when he has to whip us a few times, he's doing it so that he can straighten us on the right path so that we don't go on the wrong path and harm ourselves, right? That is what a father is, right? And yeah. so God, the, 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 the prayer is saying, our father, you're addressing him as your father and so what we have to recognize now is his place his position in our lives and in this world altogether right so what does the phrase thy kingdom come mean anybody want to to try and answer that question what does the phrase thy kingdom come mean sister opal when you hear thy kingdom come what do you think What's the first thing that comes to mind? Reveal that which is in. Let, let I can't hear you, woman of God. You have to speak up. Please. Let that which is in the heaven is be released. Okay, Sister Margaret. To me, it's like when heaven kind of comes down to earth. When that, what it would kind of be like. Like what you're praying like up in heaven and asking God and it kind of like comes. Okay. All right. It's the Tara. For me, <clears throat> um, thy kingdom come is asking God for his will to be done. All right. Um, Fiona. Good evening, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. when I hear thy kingdom come, I think about um, I guess getting like an understanding or just a perspective or a view of like the kingdom of heaven all right um so we, we live in god's kingdom right we live in we live in god's kingdom not ours right um so let me ask you how many of us go into somebody's house for say for example you go on vacation and somebody invited you to stay at their home um, how many of us go into the home and decide to move around the furniture the way we like it <laughs> and paint the house in a different color because I don't like that color <laughs> and, you know, set your own rules in that house because the rules that that person has in the house, you don't like those rules, right? How many of us do that? Mm -hmm. None of us. Not right. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you don't like the person. No, you don't do that. <laughs> when you when you when you when you go to the person's house, you um you conform to their rules, isn't it? You you try to be on your best behavior, you try to make sure that you know you don't do anything that will hurt their feelings because they have opened their home to you, right? right. So we, we live in God's kingdom. And what we have to ensure that we do is that whatever it is that we do has to be conformed to what God says. 
-hmm. we can't want to do things the way we want to do it because it makes us feel better or this is what we like and right. so thy kingdom come means that we everything that we do is conformed to god's way of doing things mm -hmm. right it's not only when we are praying right right yes so it's like us being in this person's house we may not like the fact that the house is quiet. We might like a loud environment, but because we're in this person's house, we have to just work with the quiet. We have to mm. just work with the quiet, right? Or the person might like music and you're in this person's house. You might not necessarily like their taste in music, but what are you going to do? Go and switch the channel no. and turn off their radio? No. No. Right? So thy kingdom come means whatever I do, because I live in God's kingdom, whatever I do must be conformed to God's way of doing mm -hmm. things, right? So the phrase is meant to shift us out of self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. It is, it is, it is, it is um, meant to shift us out of self-centeredness and shift us into a sovereign lifestyle. It's not just about prayer. And that is why I started here. Because a lot of us, we read the Lord's Prayer and think it, it is only about prayer. But it is not. Yeah. Right? It's not just about prayer. It's, it, it is intended to shift our minds and our hearts into a place of surrender right into a mm -hmm. surrendered lifestyle yes sir uh a question for you um because somebody could say i mean when you explain thy kingdom come you said um we we live in god's kingdom right mm -hmm. um if the notion is put to us that john 17 um tells us that um, that we are in the world, but we are not of the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, and another passage tells us that the prince of the air controls um, this this atmosphere and, and this. Correct. Um, so how is it then, can you say, we are in God's kingdom? Mm -hmm. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. Now we can't, so that, that passage trumps everything else because even, even the enemy and the prince of the air who is in the world and who is con in, in control of this atmosphere is still under God's authority. Because everything, the world and everything in it is God. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, if I own a house mm -hmm. and I rent it out, I'm still the owner. Mm -hmm. Right? So... Those that are renting renting it out, even if they're going to do modifications, they have to come they to me. They have to come to you first. Yeah. Oh. So I'm just, I mean, as I said, I mean, I, I, I threw it out there um because I know that there are persons, you know, who would love to um, you know, try to use scripture. But I love your answer. Um, as you said, but you know, just start about the house, because the owner of that house, listen, mm -hmm. he has full authority. You understand? And yes, he rents it out, right? Um, but if there's any major thing um, to that house, that um, person who's renting it cannot do it. You understand? If any, if there's any damage, it, it goes to um, the, owner. the owner. So I'm, I'm, I'm just agreeing. I'm just agreeing with you. Amen. Amen. All right. So what does thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven mean? 
means um, that we... anybody. Go ahead, Sister Sister Tara. Well, based on what you just said, that means that we must surrender and agree to the authority of God and what mm -hmm. He desires. Mm -hmm. Anybody was going to say anything different? Y'all can say no, you know, so I can know if no, ma'am, no, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Sorry. No problem. Amen. Jeez. Um. So, how will it will be done on earth? How will the will be done on earth? Is that what you said? How? Yes. Yes. How? Well, um, it will be done if we are obedient to God and um, open to following whatever it is that He asks us to do. The instructions okay, that He gives. Right. Exactly. So, so, so. All of these questions and these points that we are bringing up is to affirm the point that I made earlier that the Lord's prayer is not just about prayer. It's about right. surrender. It's about obedience. It's about um agreeing with God and aligning with God's plan. Right? Mm -hmm. we, I think we, we I think it's fair to say we we, we grasp that now. Yes. yes so what is so important that Jesus would teach his disciples to pray for God's will to be manifested on earth? Anybody? By um, bringing people, a lot of people to Jesus. Can we say that? Many people to surrender to Jesus. Okay. All right. Okay, Sister Carlet was answering. Um, I think she was answering, not sure which one, but she says, by surrendering our will to him and by letting him work through us. Amen. Yes, Sister Margaret, please go ahead. Oh, Junior had an answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you please repeat the question? I lost all train of thought. Oh, okay. An... What... <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. What is so important that Jesus would teach his disciples to pray for God's will to be maintained on earth? Oh, wait. Did we, to we manifest, to... sorry, to be manifested on earth. Whoops. Oh, so oh, you don't have that? I, I thought it was like, why uh, for to manifest God's will on earth? <laughs> oh, I, I think he I... misunderstood you. <laughs> okay, that's all right. That's okay. That's all right. I'm getting a feedback though from somebody's um device. Um nobody? Uh um, um, it's important. Go ahead, you sister. Go ahead. No, you go ahead this time. <laughs> okay. Um, it is important that um the disciples, not just back then, but um us today, um, are taught to pray the will of God because um if we are not praying for the will of God to be made manifest on the earth, then we're not we're not being useful or effective in our ministry. You know what I mean? Like if we're not praying for the, the will of God, what whose will or what other will are we praying for? Exactly. And how do we think that that's going to be impactful to um for the work that we are commissioned to do in the earth? Amen. It's really simple uh, and straightforward, you know. Yes. It's really very simple and straightforward. And this is what we're talking about when we look at as it is in heaven, because if it is not that way, then what are we doing? Mm. Hmm. What are we really doing? Existing. If our whole lives mm. isn't saying, Lord, as it is in heaven, then mm. what's the point of us being alive? No point. It doesn't make any sense. All right. And so it is important for us to pray this way now. It is, imp that shouldn't be why. <laughs> it, 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 I'm sorry, is it important for us to pray this way now and why? Yes, it is. Somebody please read John 17, 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Right. Because Jesus came to do what? Fulfill the will of his father. Okay. By doing what? 
by dying on the cross, saving the souls of man. Dying on the cross. Huh? Okay, we're not sure. By oh, the yeah. will of of, of of um giving his life on the cross for us. Okay. Jesus came to redeem the souls of men. Okay, Christians? Remember what happened in the garden? Yeah. And at the fall of man? Yes. Yes? yes. And God had to cover Adam and Eve with a ram skin? Yes. Right? So Jesus came to earth to die so that he could redeem man back to God. How he did it? Died on the cross. Right? Amen. And yes, it was accomplishing the will of the Father. Okay? Okay. So it is important for us to continue this because Jesus walked on this earth, but when he was leaving, he gave us Holy Spirit with the authority and the power to continue the work of spreading the good news so that everybody can know that there is a savior who came to earth to rescue you from the pit of hell so that your soul will not be lost to eternity. Does that make sense? That yeah. is the foundation of our faith, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Because we sound like we're not too sure. All right. So we're going to, any questions so far? Nope. Or any other questions I should say? No, ma'am. No. When, 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 when Jesus prayed and said, give us today our daily bread. He wasn't, he wasn't only talking about food to eat, bread to eat. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's our daily measure of, of, um, I want to, I want to be careful how I word this. Our, it's a spiritual food. Jesus is the bread of life. Right? It's our daily measure of spiritual nourishment. So every day we need a measure of spiritual nourishment to take to the world so that we can continue the work. Because if we're not eating in nat in the natural sense, if we're not eating, we won't have any energy to sustain us to do any kind of work. If we go to do to work or to school, we're gonna pass out, any. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. All right. Yep. Let's move on. Let us let us look at Luke eleven two, and somebody else find uh, Matthew six seven to ten, please. Luke eleven two says, and he said unto them, when he pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Amen. Matthew six seven to ten in the King James. But thou, when you pray, thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father will seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heaven, as the hathen do, heathen. or, or heathen, sorry. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. All right. So the, the the passage in Matthew says, um, and I'm paraphrasing, do not perform these vain repetitions like the heathens do. Why is it then that we have practiced over the years to simply repeat the Lord's Prayer as it is scripted in the Bible? If the same Jesus, who is teaching us to pray, is instructing us, do not practice to do these vain repetitions. Don't just repeat it. But lock away in your closet 
and pray according to this manner. Does that make sense? Yes. Everybody follow me? Are we together? Yes. Yes, following you. Okay, that was a question. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, teacher. Um, okay. I think the reason we do it is plain and simple, a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, not because the word is not there, but simply because with you, even if we read it, we just refuse to apply it. Um, but I don't think, and this might be a bit of an unpopular um opinion, but I don't think every time people pray um the Lord's prayer, it is necessarily as a repetitive. You know what I mean? Like not every time, like not every time I pray the Lord's prayer, I'm just praying it because. It's something that I learned to do in school when I was growing up in Jamaica. Um, so I do think that there are certain instances where the Lord's Prayer is prayed as it is written in the Bible, but it is prayed um, with, I guess, the posture or the intention to actually see those words that we're praying come to fruition or is something that we really believe. Okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> Like Fiona said, it's a lack of knowledge, and I think we just see it as we would see any other scripture that we would read, just like I would repeat a Psalm 23, you know, or a, or a Psalm 91. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sister Margaret. Junior has a question. Hold on. So, mm -hmm. on, uh, I don't know your name, but, uh, oh, Fiona. Fiona. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> what you said, you mentioned intent. So does that doesn't that beg the question? You should or shouldn't be praying with intent, with like intent to heal, intent to uh, receive a message, and etc. You you get what I'm trying to say, right? Well, yeah. Every time you pray, you should pray with intent. Um, I personally believe that is um that is something that you ought to do. However that is not always something that happens um just as i don't know if you're here for the very beginning but pastor kash when she started talking about the prayer you know she mentioned that there was something in jamaican culture we learned this prayer in school and we said this prayer every day so for a lot of people a lot of people especially in jamaica they know this prayer word for word but they don't pray it with the same kind of intention just as you said they just do it because it's a routine thing to do it's just like i don't know another routine activity you might have you get home from school and you wash your hands as soon as you get in the house because that's something that you grew up doing all the time it's not because you actually know the reason behind washing your hands every time you get in the house after you get off the streets you know what i mean so the difference is why versus why you're doing it and then i guess you know you're just doing it because it's what you always did I, mm -hmm. I I believe I I believe one of the reasons why it happens is is just because that's what we were taught. Yes. Um. You know, it's it's. I mean, a lot of things that I used to do, I did it because that's what they taught me to do, <laughs> and I I never I never thought to, because I respected the teacher. And apparently the teacher respected their teacher and their teacher respected their teacher. Um, so nobody <laughs> really stopped like what, what we're encouraging now, go read it for yourself and try to right. understand it. Mm -hmm. So because as, as Fiona said, um, and, and, and I look at, for example, Jamaica and the States, I don't know any, I don't think I can find five children in the States and tell them to tell you the Lord prayer and they know it. They don't. No. Okay. But, um, but then we in Jamaica it's like in the schools, right? There you go. Generational choices right. in the schools is that, um, this is a part of us. And then because we said we are a Christian nation and, you know, so let's repeat this and, and we, so we, we haven't really gone into scripture, right? Um, to read as what we're doing. Um, 
many, 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 and, and, and even this, Pascal, it's even with what you said, right, what you say, we still are supposed to take our Bibles with mm -hmm. our notes and go yep. over, did Pastor Kash tell me something stupid? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, yeah, she's, but what we have done is that, oh, that's Pastor Kashina. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she normally teaches well. So therefore anything she says is gold when mm -hmm. she could have told you, you know, something that is not even in scripture. So I just right. think one of the reasons is that is what we were taught and we never sought to to, to read it for ourselves to try and mm -hmm. understand why we do it. I also agree mm -hmm. with Fee that I don't think every time it is done, right? It is done out of just repetition, right? Yeah. I do believe that there are instances, right? Um, but I, I also believe that probably more time than none, it is done yeah. out of repetition, right? right? But I don't think it's every time. Amen. Athea Hunter, um, Charlotte says, uh, maybe it's the only prayer that they know, <laughs> which is so true. It's true. A lot of people only know that prayer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're in church and you ask somebody to pray and they just repeat the oh for the prayer. <laughs> I've seen that happen so many times. Um, Yes, Tara, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was sitting here thinking because the only time I've heard the Lord's Prayer is pray. when I was growing up. And it was only here, if you don't know how to pray, pray this prayer. But we never really were taught to memorize it like, like you guys do in Jamaica. But I started to think about it and I'm like, you know what, but I never look deeper. So it's really just laziness because we don't <laughs> to go deeper mm -hmm. so if we really want to call a spade a spade mm -hmm. go ahead that's mm -hmm. truly the root of it is mm -hmm. spiritual laziness god my god mm -hmm. and Thank can you. i just say and i'm throwing myself in that group so i'm just saying because <laughs> i could have learned it so much faster <laughs> mm -hmm. it's you know never mind it's okay it's okay I'll hold my peace. <laughs> Can I say something? Yes, yes, ma'am. All right. Um, at one point, I was taught that the the Lord's prayer is a model prayer, and it it outlines the like it oh, gives you an outline correct. of how you, of how you are to present your prayer. Your prayer to, correct. Toward, to your father. Mm -hmm. So you know it it came with it with with the the, the reverence and you know mm -hmm. acknowledging his sovereignty you know giving him thanks for the various mm -hmm. provisions and you know mm -hmm. asking for seeking forgive you seek forgiveness as you go on until you know you just ensure that you acknowledge him as a sovereign mm -hmm. person so when you whatever you do whatever you say it must be done in reverence and just using this model. Mm -hmm. then you can launch out into to to so I was taught to use it you can use it as an opener it is a model it, it yeah you yes. can also use it as the, to to finish a prayer or you Correct. can use mm -hmm. it as as an opener mm -hmm. I'm glad yes. I'm glad I'm glad you yes. you 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 said that Pastor Cash yes um to what Mama Paulita said it is a model I think Correct. what we have done, mommy, is that we have moved it from a model to a statue. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, we have moved it from a model to a statue. So, wow. you know, we just say it and we put it there and, you know, but there is no why, you know, because a model, mm -hmm. um, they said, okay, this is how you pray, not mm -hmm. this is what you pray. Exactly. Right, right, right. You understand? Word, this word, is word, how yeah. you pray, right? Mm -hmm. Not this is what you pray. And and I love mm -hmm. I love what Sister Carlet said. The truth is, there are many <laughs> that that's all they know. That's all they were taught in school. It and Psalm twenty three. Yeah. Um, and you know, so that's what we we go to our bed, um, and we 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 pray that you know, and wherever we go. So I mean, yeah. that's also true. Amen. Like, it goes back to the depth. Concept that we talked about last week. 
Mm -hmm. How deep do you really yeah, want to go? Yeah. And and we have to understand as Christians, um, uh, your pastor can teach you only so much. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know what I mean? You you have a responsibility. If you are in a marriage relationship, okay, for for example, you're single. You have a you have a friend, right? You're a female and you have a female friend and you are single and maybe the friend is dating and the friend would say to you, she know you're interested in being on the dating scene. And she said to you, you know, um, my, my, my date has a, has a friend, right? Uh, maybe we could double up, right? And you're like, okay, cool. Mm. Yeah, we could do it. And you go on a double date and you'll have a good time. How much of the effort and the work in building that relationship to the point where it could become a healthy marriage is your friend going to put in? Mm. <laughs> matey. Matey. That's what, that's, okay. that's, 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 Sir, that's can what you mute your mic? Mute you are streaming. But, but think about it. Think about it, guys. I'm going to say it again. How much of the work and how much of the effort will your friend put in subsequent to that initial meeting? None. Or not maybe much even more. not much she more. Did. Maybe That's after the initial did. meeting, she might come to you. She might, how did the date go? You know, right. let 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 you know, maybe do another Let's date unpack. or whatever together or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. But say for example, you and this person now strike up a serious relationship and you know, it, it shifts into courting and eventually to marriage. You have to make the effort. You have to right. put in the work to build that relationship, to strengthen that relationship and to go deeper in that relationship to the point mm -hmm. now where your friend don't know most of what goes All on anymore. Right, right, right. Right? And so your, your, your pastors and leaders have a responsibility, yes, to bring you to Christ and to help to nurture you. But you have a greater responsibility to maintain that relationship. Amen. Amen. Girl, Amen. God, listen, it's on you. Amen. So if you are a jellyback Christian, that is your problem. Ooh, it's your jellyback. fault. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Right? Amen. <laughs> Amen, Mama, Pastor Christ. It's serious. It's true. And we have and, people in oh, church sorry. for 30 years praying the same way, mm -hmm. the same thing. If you ask them to pray for your grandmother, they fight warfare. If you ask them to pray for the little girl going down the street, they fight warfare. And if you ask, listen, it doesn't matter what kind of, if you ask them to bless the food, they fight warfare. Pray warfare. Listen, testify. I was waiting on that one, Pastor Carl. <laughs> And then, that that one, that one touches me. It's that that one touched me because <laughs> I, I, I remember our wedding. So I, that, one <laughs> that, that, that one touched me. That one touched me. It makes you <laughs> wonder. Pastor yes, Cash, go ahead, may, go ahead. Yes. It, 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 as you were speaking about the, the stages as you, you cultivate the relationship, um, it that is... Your willingness to cultivate the relationship with God and to know God on a level beyond what your pastor or your teacher or your minister um, tells you is the differentiating factor between an intimate relationship and an mm. acquaintance relationship. Come on. Because mm. if you categorize your friends or whoever, you know, you'll say, okay, well, this is my work friend or my school friend. And then you have like your inner circle, like the friends that you do life with. Mm -hmm. And that those are the friends that you're intimate with and you have a better cultivated relationship with them. So if the only way that you hear from God is through the pastor and the minister, you don't you don't have a, a line of communication with God. God's not your friend. He's your acquaintance. He's your colleague. He's your gym partner, you know, but he's not he's not your friend. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. but 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 fiona we expect to pray and we expect answers and we expect suddenly but how you gonna like hear to suddenly those... from somebody that you don't have a phone number for we'll pray you can't even text him you can't you know what i'm saying like you have to send a letter and wait three weeks for the postal service to deliver it because you don't you need a courier person instead of just having a direct line mm -mm. Oh my God. Sure. Listen, oh my oh God. No. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. But, you know, Fiona, my question to you is... <laughs> yes, Pastor. Yes, Apostle. Um, 
I and and let us say, sister, sister, let us say, Junior and I are friends. We mm -hmm. haven't seen each other for a long time, and we don't call each other. But um, every three months we call and we we check up <laughs> on each other, and we it's like we we started off where we left off. Um, I still consider my friend. So okay. why yeah. is it that um, I cannot um, not just call God every three months and he's still my friend? And mm -hmm. we just pick up where we left off. Why Why? Why not? Call your wife once every three months and see if she's still going to be your wife. Listen! It's going to be a level of intimacy. Come right. On. Come on. Yeah, but but hold on, hold on, because I had a conversation today with um someone, and he has a situation where uh um there's someone that he's <laughs> helping that is in the army. Um, he lives in the army, um, but his wife lives somewhere else. Um, they don't get to talk as often. Um, for various situations or for various reasons. Mm -hmm. But when he comes home, she's still his wife. Um, so uh, help me understand why is it then that if that can work, that my, um, as I said, three month or every two week communication with God is not good enough. Well, the army situation is situational in the sense that there are certain circumstances that are preventing him from having a conversation every day. Um, and also, he's not going to be in the army forever. Everybody who's in the army, they have to eventually go back home. Or I don't know the terms. But the difference between that relationship and the relationship with God is that we're not deployed anywhere. God's not deployed anywhere. So there is really no excuse as to why you should have take a three-month hiatus and be off of God for however long you feel like and then come back and pick up right where y'all left off. You know what especially I mean? Because, especially because God is an omniscient God, um, right. an omnipresent God who can be wherever you are, who is touched by the feelings of your infirmities, who knows to meet you at your level, um right. and all of that good stuff right. so it it is it, it, it's not the same it cannot be compared mm -hmm. um is that margaret or junior okay go ahead well you kind of basically just said what i wanted to say i was oh <laughs> Between the three months and now is basically it doesn't matter where you are any place any time anywhere every second every minute hour day etc you can have free access to god yeah amen. Amen. so amen yes 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 you're waiting you're just wasting your time you're wasting my god your hmm. opportunity really my god hmm. make sure you does that answer your question, Apostle? <laughs> uh, not really, but we should continue. <laughs> no, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't. Because even the situation I was sharing, is not necessarily the person is not deployed. Um, the, the, the fundamental thing, though, and you know, I was just throwing these things out because the yeah. truth is these things happen. Right. And we, 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 we categorize. But what I love is what you said. Um, God is, listen, God is here. Yeah. It is not that um, he has left. He is here and he has made himself available. All right. And I come back to Stefiona's point. If you do not reach out to him, full stop, he's not your friend. That's that's yeah. what it is. You understand? So, um, you know, as I said, I threw it out because I know sometimes, you know, we look at, you know, various situations and we try to. It's like we, we, we try to justify. make a crutch or justify, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. our actions. Um, but the truth is, we're also past the cash call to die daily. Yes. Amen. True. You understand? We're called to die daily. It's not it's not every three weeks. 
Hmm. <laughs> you understand? I mean, it, it, it's 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 a living for Christ is a daily living. Correct. You understand? So so if it is that I I I, I put him in in the naughty corner, and then I try <laughs> to pick him up back, you know, because now things are then you know there there is no relationship, you know, mm -hmm. and, and even with the couple, um, the truth is. Yes, the husband, even if he's not deployed, he might be away, but that relationship, though they're married, is strained. That's what I was looking exactly. for. Because of the exactly. distance. That yeah. relationship is strained. You understand? And there is there is going to be um there is going to be a lot of issues with a relationship like that. I see you pulled out the woman of God again from Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I won't say another word. But that's that's what I wanted to to to, to share. Yes. <laughs> oh my God! Welcome, woman of God. <laughs> Praise God. Once we learn the words, we tend to forget the meaning. Wow! Ooh. Wow! 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 Ooh. Let that sit for a minute. Mm -hmm. Wow. And this is sad. Mm -hmm. And this is not just in regards to the Lord's prayer. But if we are to be honest with ourselves as believers in Christ, if we should be honest with ourselves as it relates to reading the Bible, coming to church on a Sunday and listening to the sermons, coming to Bible study on a Thursday night and listening to the teachings. We learn the words, but we tend to forget the meaning. Mm. We can quote the scriptures when we are praying. We learn the words, but we forget the meaning. Last mm. night in our women's ministry meeting, we talked about, we talked about this being yeah. hearers and not doers of the word. Yeah. because once we learn the words we tend to forget the meaning mm. we become familiar with God to the point where we forget and this is what is killing the church yeah. and I talk about this a lot and you guys who have been walking with me for a while would have heard me talk about the, the 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 instances where I I worked with people, um, from the Jewish community, I mean religious Jews, and mm -hmm. people from the Muslim community, and okay. how they rever their worship time, how mm -hmm. those times are precious, and it doesn't matter what is happening, you do not infringe on their time that they're mm -hmm. dedicating to their God because that time is untouchable. It's non-negotiable. Wow. Mm -hmm. And if it means that they have to walk away from a job, they will do it wow. to honor mm -hmm. their God. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Christians still remain the most ignorant <laughs> The Christ mm -hmm. followers still remain the most ignorant of all the religions. And you can go back and check it for yourself if you don't agree with me. That the people who say they follow Christ in the modern church are the most ignorant because we believe that because we can quote the scripture and because we can speak in tongues, we have it made. We do mm -hmm. not. Because when Satan met Jesus on the mountain after his time of fast, he used, he used the scripture. Yep. He was able to quote it as well. Mm. Pastor Cash, if I may, quickly, I'm sorry. Last night, it's yes, funny, sir. it's funny, you guys dealt with that in the women's fellowship last night in the new believers class that's what we spoke about righteousness oh my god <laughs> um, by grace and the fact that the um the pharisees right they knew the law you understand they knew the law mm -hmm. and but they 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 forgot the meaning yes 
Mm. You know, um, it's it and it's so it's it's crazy if we look at it. They knew the law of Fiona that was pointing them to the man that was before them, but mm -hmm. they did not believe the very mm -hmm. thing that they quoted. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. And if we look at our lives, you understand when 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 we can quote. Um, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but let a situation happen. <laughs> My God. Immediately, we are we are taken over in a frenzy. Yep. Not just by fear, but by the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah. And beyond that, let um, I mean, something happen. And and it's 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 like we forget every scripture. And and I ask myself, and please don't misunderstand me, because there are natural pastor cash. And I and, and and I thank God for what God has done. And I'll say with us, Pastor Cash, over the last few years, because at one point, I mean, I would tell you, listen, as something happened, you need to plead the blood. But there are natural elements to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to accept that there are natural reactions we will react. You understand? But it's not about the natural reaction. It's when we move from that and we go into, no, it's like, as I said, the spirit or something that's deeper than the natural reaction. It's deeper than mm -hmm. just, just doubt and then move on. It's deeper than just fear. But we... And, and and I love this. And I and, and I love this. Huh. We once we learn the words, we, we tend to forget, forget the meaning. You understand? Bible study mm -hmm. is a perfect example, different teachings. Right? You learn something today, like you know, I, I, I personally have a problem with Sister Fiona because the sermon she preached on Sunday, like all week, I've had to understand. What it means <laughs> going in the fire, oh, and, and, and it, it's like it's 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 like it's like I'm okay, God, okay, um, mm -hmm. I heard it, but no, no, I mm -hmm. can't forget it. Yeah, mm, <laughs> understand. I, I I have to know, live it. But yeah. we, we come and we we hit hear sermons. Oh, bless the Lord. We cry. We lift our hands. Oh, oh that was awesome. But. In the split second when something happens, we forget the meaning, mm -hmm. right? We don't apply it. And then we wonder why the, the, the Christian Jews, as you would say, Pastor, or, you know, the Muslims, right? You would wonder why these guys decide that, listen, this is what my religion states. This is what I'm going to do. Because mm -hmm. they, they don't forget the meaning. That's why you have mm. all these guys dying for what they believe. Yes. Mm. They will yes. strap a bomb to we themselves. To they yeah. will strap a bomb to themselves and die. We? Oh, no. Mm -mm. We wanna we don't even wanna, you don't even want to walk two miles for Jesus. Listen, mm -hmm. listen. We, we, don't even, we don't even evangelize. We have all the excuse. To, uh -huh. to not evangelize. We have the oh, reasons. God can we, bring them into the church. Oh, um, I, 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 I have this to do. I have that to do. And I have all these different things to do. And, and what happens, Pastor Kash, and it's my last thing, is that we are preaching to a bunch of Christians and we're telling them the same thing over and over mm -hmm. and over and over. And all they're doing is getting fatter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, 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 that's it. Mm -hmm. We're preaching yep. the same thing to the same people, because we see the same people every Sunday, because mm -hmm. they don't bring, and then they tell you, oh, my church is good. You're, you're a liar. Your church is not good. You bring <laughs> no money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because my we God. have forgotten the meaning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And until we change yes. and start doing it the, the, the biblical way, because the biblical way is the scripture you quoted, um, I think you said for last night. Be not only hearers, mm -hmm. but be what? Doers. Mm -hmm. so, Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Yes, Sister Margaret, please go ahead. I brought somebody with me last Sunday. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> he said, you know what? Don't mix me up Listen, in that. That was not for you, Sister Margaret. That was... <laughs> oh my god. Oh my yes. god, I appreciate that. And I heard you brought them last night too. So, yes. so let's go. Yes, let's go. Keep it up. <laughs> I needed Make that light moment. Listen, listen, listen. Oh my god. <laughs> When we pray, thy kingdom come. We are, yes, sir. We just we, lost you. We have to go back. Yeah. We have to, we have to go. Okay. I was just reading the sentence on the screen. When we pray, thy kingdom come. We affirm that God reigns in everything and his will is perfectly accomplished in heaven and in earth. Amen. Jesus was clear that God's kingdom was already present here on earth through him. Mm. It was very clear. Right? And that mm -hmm. God's kingdom continues through the church in the form of his message. Let us look at the scriptures. They're a bit lengthy, so let's see if we can find them real quick. And, oh no, these aren't the lengthy ones. Anybody, Mark 1, 14 to 15. Uh, 14. Uh -huh. Go ahead. I have Mark 4. Have Go Mark. ahead and read it. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Well, Mark... Fiona, go ahead and read it. Okay. Fiona, please go ahead and read. Okay. Um, he, uh, Mark 4, verses 26 to 32. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. Amen. 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 So this is talking about the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. The word of God is the seed. So God, Jesus is saying here, the kingdom is likened to the word when it is spoken and Amen. it falls on the ground and it sprouts overnight and grows and increase and Amen. even if it's a small mustard seed the simplest word remember the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing yeah. by the word yeah. and so if, even if it is a small seed that is sown it grows um mm -hmm. and sprout out branches to the point where even birds can rest on it so this is what mm. Jesus is saying, that the kingdom of God is already here and the kingdom of God continues to be manifested and be present on earth, even through his message. So the kingdom of God is not only a physical kingdom. Wow. Mm. wow. Brother Andrew, please go ahead. What are you reading? I have Luke 4, 4 to 3. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities and towns and all and also for I was sent for this purpose. Amen. Amen. 
Mark 1, 14 to 15. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. This time is the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Amen. Amen. Luke 13, 20 to 21 reads. And again, he said, whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like Levon, which is a which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Hmm. Okay. The word. Amen. Amen. So leaven is like yeast or yeast. Uh, something. Mm -hmm. It's a raising agent. And when you put it <laughs> in the flour or the wheat, it it allows it to raise. Um, which is again also used to symbolize the word of God and the message of Christ. Because when you put it out there, it causes, you know, lives mm -hmm. to, yes, growth, growth. Mm -hmm. um, Sister Margaret, please go ahead. And then anybody else who has a question or comment. Oh, no, Junior was raising his hand so we could read that. That was it. <laughs> and y'all just sniped it from me. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. All right, Junior, look for uh, Luke 14, 15 to 24, please. But there is a future kingdom as well, right? Which Jesus and the prophets spoke of. So there is a future kingdom, the uh, New Jerusalem that, you know, the Bible talks about. But when we're asking for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven, it's not, we're not talking about the new kingdom that God, Jesus said, I'm, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the present active, like Jesus himself coming on earth and saying, the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God has come. And that kingdom is still here. Amen. That representation of the kingdom is still here. And we still have access to that. We still have the authority to call that kingdom into existence, into being, into operation on earth, even this day. Amen. Right? And so we have to understand when we read the scripture, not because the word looks the same and sound the same. It doesn't necessarily mean the same every single time we read it. All right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, um, uh, Junior, if you found the scripture, somebody else quickly look for Luke 19, 11 to 27. I have Luke 19. What was it? Luke 15. Junior was going to read Luke 14, 14, 15 to 24. Go ahead with Luke 19, Tara. We wait for him. Right. As they were listening to this, he went on to tell the parable because he was near Jerusalem and they thought the kingdom of God was going to appear right away. Therefore, he said, a nobleman traveled to a far country to receive him for himself authority to be a king and then to return. He called 10 of his servants, gave them 10 minus menace uh, and told them to engage in business until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we don't want this man to rule over us at his return turn having received the authority to be king he summoned those servants he had given the money to so that he could find out how much they had made in business the first came forward and said master your mina has earned 10 more minus well done good and faith a good servant he said uh, to him because you have been faithful with very small matter have authority over 10 towns. The second came and said, master, your miner has made five manas. So he said to him, you will be over five towns. And another came and said, master, here is your mina. I have kept it safe in a cloth because I was afraid of you. Since you are such a harsh man, you collected what you didn't deposit and reap what you did not sow. So he told him, I condemn you by what you have said, you evil servant. If you knew I was so harsh of a man collecting what I didn't deposit and reaping what I didn't sow, why then didn't you put my money in the bank? And when I returned, I would have collected it with interest. So he said to those standing there, take the manna away from him and give it to the one who has 10 minus. 
But they said to him, Master, he has 10 minus. I tell you that to everyone who has more will will be given. And from the one who does not have even what he does have will be taken away. But bring here these enemies of mine who did not want me to rule over them and slaughter them in my presence. Amen. Amen. You could go ahead now. Um... You're muted, Junior. Now it's no, okay, freezing. No. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Um, and when one of them that sat at that sat at sat at shush sat at meet with him heard what is this phrase in here i know it's a different one him and when one of them that sat at meet with him heard these things he said unto him blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of god then said he unto him a certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come for all things are now ready. And they and they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and shewed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in Hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast command, commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Amen. 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 So these, thank you so much, guys. Um, so these passages are really speaking to a future the kingdom. So that's what I just wanted to um help us to understand. Uh let me see. There is something in the chat. Oh, okay, through the chat. Okay, not sure what the part was about, but that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right. So, thy will be done on earth as it as it is in heaven. We must desire as children of God and do all that we can to ensure that God's sovereign rule is established in our lives and in the world. These mm -hmm. are scriptures that we read every single day. Every single day. Right? But we are now being reminded today that we have to desire and not just desire it, but we have to do what we need to do to ensure that God's sovereign rule is established in our lives first and then in the world through us. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anybody's going to read or do Proverbs. I have to ask? Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and not... Do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Romans 12, 1 to 2 reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not Conform to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. 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 Amen.
Psalm 103, 19, the Lord had prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruled over all. Amen. 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 So we're talking about um, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our lives must reflect perfect obedience, which aligns or should align with heaven as the model of perfect obedience to God's will. Mm. When you think of what is happening in heaven, I mean the physical space where God dwells and the angels are surrounding the throne crying, holy, holy, holy. When you think of, when you <laughs> imagine that picture, our lives should reflect that level of perfect obedience. Mm. Yes. Not like the people who said, oh, I just got married, so I can't be at church. I can't come to the supper. Oh, mm. I just bought some oxen and I have to go and approve them, so I can't come. I just bought some land and I have to go and till the soil, so I can't come. And we find everything else to do, our schools, our jobs, our families, everything else comes first. Mm. And we can't make it this evening. We know it's Bible study. But we didn't plan to do everything on Wednesday so that we could be available to meet with God on Thursday. Even though we know that Bible study is scheduled. And we know it's Sunday morning. And we didn't plan to look for the clothes from Saturday night so that we can get to church early and be in a, ready, in a frame of mind. Mm -hmm. Ready to worship. Right? But then we come and we shout the loudest. <laughs> and we pray for 20 minutes. Mm. as if we were trying to make up for the times that we didn't pray at home <laughs> and we think that is all good because I'm an intercessor you know we pull down and tear down when the things that we need to pull down and tear down is ourselves mm. our lives <sighs> must reflect perfect obedience and the type of obedience that aligns with heaven as the model for perfect obedience to God's will. Anybody find the scriptures as yet? Please, if you have. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So, hmm. Matthew 16. Do you know... Do you not know that if you continually surrender yourselves to anyone to do his will, you are the slaves of him who, whom you obey, whether that be to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness, right doing and right standing with God? Amen. Amen. James 1.22 but be he doers of the word and not hearers only, receiving your own selves. Hmm. And John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. First John 2, 3 to, 6, 3 to 6. And thereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. <laughs> he that said, I know him and keep it not his commandments is a liar and the truth mm -hmm. is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that said he abide in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. My Amen. God. So, Pastor Kashina. Yes, sir. Um, I... I I Romans 16 Romans 6 16 mm -hmm. do you realize that you become the slave mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you for finding that sir thank you I, yes. I, I, I want I can leave it there mm -hmm. yes do yes. you realize that you become the slave mm -hmm. of whatever you choose you obey to obey yep mm -hmm. Yep, it, yep, yep, yep. It, it, and then it, it comes back for me to Sunday, that Jeremiah passage about being the clay. Mm -hmm. 
You mean the teapot versus the bowl? I, 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 and <laughs> do you realize that you become the slave Thank of you. whatever you choose, you choose to, to obey. obey? Yes. You can, didn't say you are, mm -hmm. you can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you mm -hmm. can choose to obey God. Yep. Which leads. Now, this is this is the other part that hits me. Not only um do that we become a slave, but it says that when we choose to obey God, it leads to mm -hmm. righteous living. Yeah. Righteous living is not mm -hmm. partial righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is not today. Because you see, Pastor Kash, I, I, I've, I've, I've sat in the seat long enough to, to hear so many things that the church has said that, um, you know, because so for example, because I didn't come today, that doesn't mean that I am not holy. Mm. And we then, mm. we then, take offense to the truth. Sarah, right? Please repeat what you just said for me. Sorry. Hmm. Gosh, I don't even remember what you're saying. <laughs> Something about not holy. To say the, 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 the way. Sorry? Something about not holy. Just because you just because you show up today or tonight, like you're holy. Does it mean that you're not holy? Too many people are speaking at once. I don't think that's the case. I think there's something going on with with our internet. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we are. We are. I, I don't know what's going on. Um, the, oh, the point I'm you. making is what happens is, like, 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 like you have mentioned and I've mentioned, and then somebody will say, "Well, not because I didn't come to Bible study, not because I wasn't here. That doesn't mean I'm not. I am not holy, because oh, I normally okay. do this, and we, 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 we." We do these things and we don't, it's, it's, it's like, and then, and then not we don't, and then we become offended. Mm. So we add, we add the spirit of offense to the fact that we already did something that we shouldn't have done. But in us is that, well, last week or week before or week before I was there, I was there, I was there. So this one time does not make me a sinner you know I, I i i struggle with that because if i go out to the street and i um hit down somebody and they die tonight one time one time, one time. Mm -hmm. now you're doing five to um, ten you know i i cannot really say to the officer um, it's the first time my main my, my thing pastor cash is our lives must reflect perfect obedience Amen. and I, I i say that understanding woman of god and 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 kb that god knows right that we will make mistakes yeah, yeah. you understand he knows us yeah. But for me, I believe is when we do the same things, mm -hmm. right? And as far as we're concerned, um, I have a reason or an excuse for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Presumptions. Um, you understand? And I, 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 I dare to say, what um. if Jesus oh. said, listen, <laughs> you know, I Ever have a reason where I can call the 10,000 <laughs> angels to take me off this cross. Yeah. Just this one time. Mm. Just this once. You understand? <laughs> let, let, let me, let me. And, and, and because again, we forget that not only was he God, but more importantly, he walked as man. Yes. Mm -hmm. what, what if, what if, what if Pastor Kashina in that garden, he said, God, listen, he didn't say, he didn't continue. What if he just stopped? Mm. What if when that cross became heavy, he said, hey, I, I, 
Listen. Get somebody else to I do am it. royalty. Yep. But I we we we, yeah. we we sit in our kingdom mindset, but not we are really me. not walking in kingdom mindset. Mm -mm, not at all. You know, and 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 then we 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 do the same things. And Pastor Kat, finally, my thing is mm. we all will fall at points. The thing that affects me is that we don't do the same thing in the to the secular world. Yes, 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 sir. Mm -hmm. yes, we sir. do not yes. do the same thing in the secular world. Mm -hmm. We only do it in the church. Mm -hmm. And if the church speaks, then I have all reason to be offended mm -hmm. by it. Mm -hmm. But if my boss my speaks, I shut up, I go to my desk, I don't say another word, even if I make up my face, because if I say something, he won't pay me on Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. Who are we really serving, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because the church not giving me anything, the church not paying my bills. Oh, mm -hmm. you obey, right? we, we don't mm -hmm. see the church as the... The, and, 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 I'm, and I'm glad, and, and I said it, I wrote it earlier in one of your statements. I think it was the slide before, right? Um, where it says, it's through the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, it yes. is so, the church yes. is so important. If the church wasn't important, Jesus would not have said, do not forsake the assembly of the brethren if the church right. was not important amen mm. amen but i can't but that's listen that's the church wasn't important Jesus, my church <laughs> listen mm -mm. i i i it it what i'm not saying is that there are not instances that people will be unavailable for church because right. I don't believe you should be at church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. At all. Listen, no, listen. I mean, I grew <laughs> up in that, 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 ain't, that ain't right. I have a life to live and God understands my life and he wants me to live my life. Amen. Okay. <laughs> and and, and, and that's, that's factual. But yeah. it's funny that the one-off meetings and stuff, we can't make them because we make other plans within those times. That these meetings are one off. Yeah. And until we understand that we're called to reflect, <laughs> reflect perfect obedience, which aligns Pastor Kashina with heaven, mm. then we are going mm. to remain where we are and we're going to remain in our feelings. And my encouragement to any leader here, right, is stop letting people bother you. Teach mm -hmm. and move on. Amen. Simple. Yeah. Not everyone yeah. will follow. Amen. 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 Yeah. That's right. Amen, sir. We must seek God's guidance in all our decisions. So we're talking about, we're talking about thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We must seek God's guidance in all our decisions, actions, and prayers mm -hmm. as we work in the earth, as we continue to work in the earth. So every step that we make, we have to seek God's guidance. Every decision that we are about to make, not after we make the decisions and the decisions fail. Not after we make the decisions and everything blow up in our faces, right? But before we make those decisions, even as the thought comes to us to do something, we have to go to God first because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Before we take action, we have to go to God first. Even before we pray, we have to go to God. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. yes. Because how are we going to know what to pray? Right. Unless Holy Spirit tells us what to pray. Mm -hmm. But that is the problem. We pray because we have a degree. Mm. 
and we, we, and we know a word. Mm -hmm. Right? But before we pray, we ought to go to God so that Holy Spirit can guide us and instruct us on how to pray. Because the Bible tells us that you cannot know the mind of a man unless the spirit of the man reveals it to you. Mm. And likewise, you will never know the mind of God unless the Holy Spirit reveals it. So there's no way you can pray effectively if you're not praying the mind of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right? Other work, other work, otherwise, sorry, you're just a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Mm -hmm. You're just an empty barrel making a lot of noise if you are praying, but you're not praying the mind of God. And in order for you to pray the mind of God, you have to go to God and allow Holy Spirit to tell, tell you what is the mind of God concerning a matter. Right. Right? So we must seek God's guidance in all our decisions before we make them, all of our actions before we take them, and all of our prayers before we pray them. Mm. Let us read. Psalm 25. All right, Sister Opal, go ahead. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Amen. Mm. <laughs> Is that true? Mm -hmm. Brother Andrew, please go ahead. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to become yeah. agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be established. Plans be established and succeed. He will come. Your what, sir? He will cause your thoughts to be. Can you say that again. He will cause. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to His will, and so shall your plans be established. Amen. Amen. That's it. That's it. So until your thoughts are agreeable to God's will, your plans will never be established. Wow. Pay wow. attention to that verse right there. Mm -hmm. So y'all are praying for stuff and it's not happening. And we're blaming God that he's too late. And why is God not answering? <laughs> but until your thoughts are agreeable to God's will, your plans will never be established. Mm. Wow. Hmm. Y'all are in my business. This is why we're doing this Bible study. This is why this Bible study. God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, let my thoughts be agreeable to your will. Your yep, 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 yep. Let my thoughts. We don't even reach actions yet, you know. Hmm. I feel the anointing on this one. Mm. Because until our thoughts are agreeable to God's will, our plans will never be established. You're breaking up past the cash. Continue to read. Continue to read other passages. Anyone? Um, James, Psalm 32, <laughs> verse 8. <laughs> Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Mm -hmm. Psalm 25, verse 4 to 5. Read already. <laughs> James, James 1, 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. Amen. Amen. 
Isaiah 30, 21 reads, And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right and when ye turn to the left. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 16, 3 says, Come in to the Lord, whatever you do, and he will establish your plan. Amen. 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 We we cannot want it any plainer than this. Yeah. <laughs> what else to do? Right? I don't know what else to do. That's it. Come on. Are you hearing me? We can now hear you. It's now, breaking yeah. up now. Are you probably... hearing me? We can now. Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, we can. All right, I'm gonna turn off my video. For leave that might help. All right, can we go ahead and read, please? Are you hearing me, guys? Yes. 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 Yeah. I feel a lot better. Okay, can we go ahead and read, please? Jeremiah eighteen ten. However, if it does what is evil in my sight by not listening to me, I will relent concerning the good I had said I would do to it. Romans 1, 18 to 21. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Amen. Amen. Romans 2, 8 and 9, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, on the Jew first and also of the Gentile. I Isaiah 30, 1 to 2, woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord. That taketh that taketh counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Verse two reads that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Praise God. Oh, oh Lord, praise God. The whole point of this, guys, is that the whole point of this is so that we can understand the authority that we have. But that authority only comes with complete obedience. Amen. That authority does not come because you can pray loud. Mm. It doesn't come because you can quote the scripture. That authority comes with complete obedience. Only mm. then will you be able to command heaven on earth. And Jesus mm -hmm. taught us to use this prayer to affirm God's authority over earthly and spiritual realms. Right? That is the way he that is why he taught us to pray this way. So that we can affirm his authority. We are taught to use this prayer to resist the enemy and to bring about God's purposes. Right? 
But do we use the scripture to align our prayers with God's will? I think we already read this, I believe, I don't know. Do we use the scripture to align our prayers with, with God's will? Last night we spoke about this um, in women's meeting as well. Because there was a situation that was brought up as we engaged in a discussion last night. And I asked the question, how do you pray? Because a lot of times we go before the Lord and we pray, oh God, um, you know, Lord. this and do this and you, you pray what it is you feel, you pray what you feel you pray in the word of God so that our prayers will align with the will of God do we pray the word of God so that our prayers can align with the will of God yes, yes we do and sometimes we pray the word of God but do we actually believe what we're praying that's another thing because James tells us four reasons why our prayers aren't answered. Hmm. Do we pray with the authority that is given in Christ? Because loud praying doesn't mean praying with authority. Hooping and hollering doesn't mean praying with authority. All right? Praying warfare prayer to bless the food doesn't mean praying with authority. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are we consistent and persistent in seeking God's will in every situation? Yeah. Or do we just do it when we're in a really bad situation and we can't find another way out? Mm -hmm. Are we consistent and persistent in seeking God's will in every situation? When we think we have the answer, we think we know the right thing to do, do we still seek God's will? Mm. <laughs> 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 when, we, when we think we have all the cards, do we still seek God's will? Mm. When it looks like everything we lost you falling into place, do we check with God to make sure? Right? But are we still praying and seeking God as well? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes. We can see you. Okay. Yes. Wondered when the assignment was going to come. <laughs> can somebody please take a picture of the screen. I have. Yes, one. I will. And let me know when I can chat. stop the share. You can. All right. Well. Okay. <laughs> 